Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in digital infrastructure. My name is Emily Scherer for JSA, and I am joined this morning by Glenn Lytle. He is the SVP of Commercial Sales for Glow Fiber Business. Glenn, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks for having me uh, on the on the show. Appreciate yeah, it. We're excited to talk yeah. this morning. So, um, Glow Fiber actually started in the Shenandoah Valley. So I have to give a quick quick shout out to my hometown of Harrisonburg, Virginia. So I'm really excited to hear more about the expansion though, because you have gone um, from Virginia to many other communities. Right. So we'd love to hear about that this morning. Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about um, that growth and, and some of those recent expansions and where you're going? Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, I'll start with kind of where we're at, because I think what's important is we were, uh, we were, recently a part of an acquisition from uh, Horizon, another large fiber provider primarily in Ohio. And so it's uniquely positioned us with uh, the network where we're kind of uh, in between two of the largest um, you know, data centers in, in the U.S., so in, in Chicago, Cermak, and, and Ashburn. And so now with uh, presence in Columbus, which is kind of, you know, you got the old data centers in, in Cermak and, and Ashburn, and now the, the growth in Columbus in terms of uh, the hyperscaler growth and that kind of thing is, is really become a prominent area for that. So uh, now we're in a position for, you know, network expansion from uh, Chicago all the way through to Ashburn and then all points in between. So continuing to expand out, the, you know, we call the water stain, the fiber water stain uh, in terms of the Glow Fiber brand uh, branching up into Pennsylvania. Uh, and so in addition to the, the the acquisition into Ohio, organic growth up into Pennsylvania, so State College, uh, York, Lancaster areas, and so again, continuing to to build out the fiber as uh, as data needs, uh, you know, demand. Yeah, what an incredible um, expansion that you're in the middle of right now, a great footprint that you're building. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to talk next about a key issue among ISPs, and that's deploying more fiber across their service areas. This is something Glow Fiber has done really well, and I'm curious how you're working with local service providers to leverage your existing fiber network. Sure. Well, you know, I think we, we actually have a couple of different divisions. One is the, the, the direct sales team, so out there selling directly to uh, end users. Uh, and then the second would be, as you mentioned, working with other local service providers. So we do have a wholesale group. And so, uh, you know, any areas that we can help uh, other smaller ISPs or even larger ISPs that look to interconnect island networks that they have. So, you know, we are able to leverage a lot of the long haul and, uh, and interconnecting cities. And, uh, and we work with, you know, uh, uh, wireless inter internet service providers to fill in some of the gaps, you know, a lot of the initiatives now to, to, to push broadband out into some of the rural footprint, given our legacy footprints right. uh, are a little bit more legacy or, um, you know, rural in nature, working with those local ISPs is very important because they can push it out even further than, than where our, uh, our network is existing. Yeah, absolutely. And you touch on something I wanted to talk about next, which is the digital divide. Mm -hmm. And you all are doing um, great work there because, as you've mentioned, many of your customers are impacted by that. So tell me how you're working um, to close that. What what steps are you taking? Sure. Well, there's a lot, a lot that goes into that for sure. I think it's really just leveraging all the resources. It's leveraging the existing uh, fiber assets that we have, working with uh, state and federal government with the different grants and their initiatives. They're looking to push, um, you know, fiber deployment and broadband into a lot of the rural areas. And so we're fortunate in that, um, you know, we're, we're, we are focused more on secondary and tertiary markets. So we're naturally already kind of deploying uh, fiber in those areas. But then working with local school districts is a great starting point to kind of, you know, get into a market and then help deploy from there. Um, so an acre tenant, if you will, is, is a lot of cases how we're able to penetrate into a market uh, and, and certainly partnering with a lot of the, the, the funding resources that are available to make sure that, um, you know, because we've got a presence in a lot of these rural areas, it's easier for us to kind of work in between and around those, those footprints. So, you know, we're, we're thrilled to be a part of a lot of that. Yeah, um, and it's you know, such important work absolutely. that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Now, a topic we can't stay away from at this conference is AI. So I want to hear a little bit about how are you helping um, your small and medium-sized enterprise customers um, who are considering how AI might fit into their overall strategy? What, what do you tell them or what are the um, the, the strategies that you help them sure. with? Well, I think, you know, AI is a funny thing. I think um, a lot of people are, are still trying to figure out what it even means. I think that in terms of my my guidance for folks that are considering it, it's you got to get in the game and you got to figure it out soon. I, I heard someone quote earlier that it's kind of like 
Uh, if you're not using AI in your business, it's kind of like saying we're not going to use Excel to do spreadsheets. You're just going to use a calculator. So I think that it's a pretty profound uh, analogy, but that's really kind of, uh, you know, what we're seeing is folks that are adopting and adopting early are really driving efficiencies into the business. And so that's kind of where we come in on the back end is how can we provide, uh, you know, the tools and resources from a technology perspective, whether it's interconnecting the, to, to data centers. You know, I mean, again, that hyperscaler growth that I mentioned in, in Columbus and, in you know, in some of the other areas is is certainly indicative of what we're seeing in AI. It's what's really driving a lot of that, that bandwidth need into the data centers. And so, you know, that just shows you how it's going to continue to push out into the edge and, and drive bandwidth needs from small and medium customers. But I think understanding really what it means and how it can drive efficiencies into their businesses is, is critical. I mean, it could be, how do you do a better job of managing your customer service or, you know, using AI on, on you know, if you've got delivery services on, on mapping out the, the, the routes. And again, it all kind of comes back to how can we help them with the tools and, and bandwidth and, and internet connectivity to drive those uh, efficiencies. Right. It's critical for so many verticals, so many small and medium sized businesses and how they can be more efficient. Yeah, yeah It's going to be fun to watch that. it uh, yeah. unfold. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now tell me what's on the horizon or what's what's coming in 2025 for low fiber sure. business. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, so, so. 2024, you know, just wrapped up the uh, the acquisition of Horizon, and so really, you know, completing that integration, which was a lot of work, got through that very quickly, and, and now it's really just growth for us in 2025. Uh, you know, what really got us here has been primarily kind of that enterprise, the larger business, the the government, education, healthcare, carrier, and tower. Uh, so continue to do that. But I think where you're going to see us really pivot and become very aggressive in 25 is more of that small and medium business. So with the deployment of a lot of our glow fiber uh, out into uh, some new markets, you know, the, the broadband capabilities and some bundle packages uh, on the small business side is really where we're focused. It's, uh, it's important to kind of get sales a little closer to the edge in the small business. And so we've really made some investments in local leadership, local sales engineering, and in, you know, kind of upgrading our product bag to make sure that we can really, you know, play in that space. So we're excited to really continue to do what we've done well over the last couple of years and really start to penetrate into that small and medium business segment. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that and best of luck in 2025. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great. And to our viewers, uh, stay connected and happy networking.